Hey guys, it's Rick, Liza Tooling. Give me two minutes and I'll make it worth your time. By the way, Joe, just remind me it's probably gonna be more than two minutes, but if you'll give me the first two minutes, I'll give you a reason to watch the last, whatever, few minutes. So today we're going to pick up where we left off on our uh, tips for employ employers and employees today. We're going to talk about hiring and firing a little bit. So we already talked in a previous video, so go look it up about firing somebody. And sometimes, you know, there's this sense that, oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> well, it's never been fun for me, but necessary. And I, it reminds me of one of my employees once. She was, uh, she was so intense. She wanted to fire somebody. She would, she would kid about, I want to fire somebody someday. And as it turned out, she was the one that got fired. So that, that was ironic, uh, unfortunate, really. Um, honestly, I didn't mean for that to happen. But when it comes to the other part of the equation, hiring, um, what are you supposed to look for? What matters to the employer? and then what matters to the employee. So we're gonna talk about that in the context of a parable that uh, Jesus spoke from the Bible. I think that it may be one of the most insightful things that I've read about hiring, believe it or not, believe it or not. So are you familiar with the parable of the talents? Right. Yeah. right. Well, what was it about? So the story goes that, uh, what is it, a farmer or something gives all his work, three workers, different amounts, different talents. He gives one, one talent, one five talents, one ten talents, and a, and something a talent like that. And talent money, right? Right, it's, it's, it's a currency. Right. Uh, he wasn't a farm. Well, he they, they call him was. master. Yeah, master. Probably you, you probably wouldn't like it if I came into the shop today and said, I am your master. Right. That would be kind of weird. So, but in the context of that time, he was an employer. Right. And the people that he entrusted, the word is used, entrusted his possessions to were his employees. Right. And just like uh, the story, uh, an owner, an employer entrusts something to his employees. And so, uh, I like that concept because it involves trusting somebody. Right. And it also involves stewarding them, stewarding something. Right? Mm -hmm. So well, how's the story go? So each of the people did something different with their money. The person with 10 talents, he went and he uh, invested it, did what he could so that when the master came back, he had 20 talents in total. So he doubled. He doubled his what investment. He, what was given. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it, go, it actually says another thing that I thought that was important, which is he went out and immediately. Right. He didn't waste I time. mean, he was excited about the mission, the vision. Mm -hmm. And there's another thing that I find really interesting. And if you've invested money, if you know anything about investing money, do you know anything about it? A little bit, right? A little bit. Yeah. We've played in the stock market a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. How, how hard is it to double your money? It's pretty difficult. It takes time. So that guy that he entrusted those funds to was skilled. Mm -hmm. So that's another part of the equation we don't really think about. Mm -hmm. How did he do that? He was skilled. He was a skilled employee. He immediately went out. I mean, he was excited and he went, he knew his job and he went and did it. So what else right. happened? So the person who was given 10 talents came back with another 10. The person who was given five talents came back with another five, did the same thing. But the person with one talent, he went and he buried it because he didn't want anything bad to happen to it, I suppose. So uh, another part of the story was that the, the employer entrusted the amount that uh, basically fit the skill set of the person that was there. Right. It says that uh, he, he uh, so one got 10, right? Mm -hmm. He was the one he entrusted the most to. Right. And then one got five. 
Mm -hmm. So he actually kind of did it according to their ability. Right. And that's that's common, right? Inside of a business or any kind of relationship, there's going to be some people that come to the table with more skills. They might be, you know, I, I won't I won't put all the adjectives on there, but we all have our pluses and our minuses. And he right. recognized that when he entrusted these things to them. Mm -hmm. So the guy that that buried it. Right. You know what it says? It says he was afraid. And I, I thought about that. He says, I'm afraid. I couldn't do the job because I was afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of failure? Afraid of the master? Afraid of the employer? Mm -hmm. He's actually yeah. like doesn't trust. So the employer entrusts something to him. And he doesn't but trust in return, back. he yeah. doesn't entrust himself to the... So that's a really fascinating concept. Mm -hmm. Well, so when I'm an employer, if I use the, if I say these are principles to hire by, I'm looking for somebody who believes in me, who right. believes in this company, who believes in what we're doing. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. You were going to add something. Well, the one thing I kind of like about this story is that um, we, we talk about how the person who was given one talent was afraid, while the other people, they went out immediately, did what they could to double it. Yeah. So that kind of... When you think about that, it kind of says that the other people probably took risks. The person who had one talent only did what he was comfortable with. Right. Everyone else right. went outside of their comfort zone. Right. So an employer is so, always looking for somebody who's willing to take that risk. Right. Who's willing to go out on a limb for them. Mm -hmm. And they're independently doing it. They didn't have to have somebody else. It's The store doesn't say that the master had told them to do something with it. They just kind of doubled it. So, right, right, yeah. right. Well, it's, it's a cool story and, and honestly, I hope that it's beneficial to you because the point is you're always got, you've got employees that are coming to you sometimes out of the woodwork and what they want is they want to get paid well. I mean, that's their thing. What, how many benefits you got? What, what's your number of vacation days, your holiday? What, what, are, what are all the things that you're gonna benefit me with? And yet, the other part of the equation is, how are you gonna steward what has been given to you? And the, the employer is going to be looking for somebody that he can entrust that stuff to. And what happens when that happens? He's going to throw more and more responsibility at that person. Right. He's going to give them a greater influence. Right. All right. That, that's just a natural thing, but we don't really think about what that means in context of the give and take of that particular situation. Right. You with me there, brother? Mm -hmm. Actually, this is my son. I forgot to introduce him at the beginning. But my youngest son, and I'm, I'm hoping that some of these tips can help him in the future. Listen, I've taken enough of your time. Thank you so much for joining us today. See you next time.